closer than me. But every day I was late. And every day without fail. Now, one morning, a Steinberg was uh, taking the register. It was very, very cold. I was wearing this anorak, the zip up the front. And I got to school, and meanwhile, I walked in, and Steinberg was calling the register. So, and while he was calling the register, I, I, I was so hot in the class, I thought I'd undo my zip. But of course, the zip stuck, and he went a little way. So I thought, what am I going to do? I'm falling through the register. So I got my anorak and pulled it up over my head, forward, and then suddenly, Spanberg stopped calling the register, and everybody in the class started laughing. Why? As soon as I got the anorak off, I saw because it was lying in his register. <laughs> I, I take the whole thing off and, and put it into his register. And I don't think, I think that detention must have lasted about a week. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my reminiscence. Is that I want to uh, say Sorry. Some funny stories about the school. Can you all hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, yes sir. With difficulty, but we can hear you. <laughs> um, obviously, there were a few instances that uh, were memorable to me. Um, but thinking about it and hearing so many stories about Sid um, reminded me of a special moment I had with Sid last year. And I think we were in 4B at the time, and I really, for the first time, really uh, revised heavily the French, because I could see how it would benefit me in later life. <laughs> you probably all know the song Goulet Vu. <laughs> however, no, thank you. however it goes, <laughs> he obviously knows the song. Um, and we've just been given the uh, exam paper, and I'm looking at my paper, and it was like really blurred. And I remember talking to Fred, Freddie Lee, the lesson, uh, who was on my right, and I said to him, Freddie, my paper's so blurred. What's yours like? With that, Sid jumps up, comes tearing over. Come here, boy, come here. What's he want, the lunatic? And he says, come, he said, give me a paper. I said, sir, if you look at paper, you'll see it's blurred. I was simply asking Freddie, you know, was his blurred as well? And he said, give me the paper, give me the paper. And he starts writing from the bottom left corner, the full scan paper. He starts writing C. Oh, and by the way, he's shaking. He's actually physically shaking with the emotion of it. And he goes C H E A T I. And he's got to the end of the paper. He's got to the end, and he didn't know what to do. And I remember looking at him. And the astonishment came over, and his eyes were like bulging. So I said, why don't you put the NG underneath, sir? <laughs> I said, put the NG underneath. <laughs> put the NG on. I said, go to the headmaster's <laughs> <laughs> Be participating in this, and thank you to the organisers who put on a, a wonderful uh, And thank you for inviting me to uh, salute our special class on our special year. Uh, and so I will shortly prepare a, a propose a toast. Uh, but now is the time to refill your glass rather than when I propose the toast. So, uh, uh, Tony, it's a bit of vodka. <laughs> you can uh, refill with whatever you wish. Uh, a few opening remarks. Some, some years ago, a rabbi was asked to propose a toast to his classmates. But afterwards, one of the old boys came up to him, and this is what he said. That was okay, but it would have been better if you hadn't been so superficial. At the next reunion, the rabbi again proposed the toast, after which the same old boy told him, that was better than last time, but you were too Talmudical. At the following reunion, the rabbi again proposed the toast, 
Afterwards, the same old boy told him, it's a pity you didn't get much attention from everyone that was there. So, so next Shabbat, after shul, the rabbi told a friend that he was upset with getting this criticism. And the friend said, uh, oh, don't pay any attention to that. That old boy doesn't think for himself. All he does is he repeats what everybody else is saying. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not a rabbi, um, but I will share what everyone is saying. Having looked at the, the uh, exchanges that we've had on, on the computer, it's clear that we were, I think, a wonderful cohort of school students. We represented a very diverse set of backgrounds. We had different aspirations. We learned to respect different values and different religious principles. But for many here, the learning experience didn't actually come from inspirational teachers. The learning experience that we had was from each other. We were our teachers. So our lives were built on foundations that were formed at school, and they were molded by classmates, many of whom are, are here this evening, and some of whom, of course, are unable for various reasons to join us. Now, amongst those that can't be here, there are friends who I mentioned in, in, in an email who sadly passed away, but let, let's remember them with a few moments of silence after I list them. This is those that I know of. Uh, Gary Herman, David Landau, Freddie Lima, Peter Lewis, A.B. Manus, Menachem Paran, Alan Pinnis, Sammy Rymus, Ian Wilder, and anybody who I wasn't aware of, and I hope that is no more. Sorry? Maybe Manus, I mentioned. So let, let's give a, a moment's silence to remember those friends that cannot be here. For warm memories, and the warm memories are memories of contributions made by all our classmates, whether they've passed on, or whether, like us, they have 70th birthdays in the recent past or, or the near future. So we celebrate all our fellow Hasmonean students, all of them. Let me tell you another story. After leaving school, an old boy had a car crash, and he recognized the other driver. I won't give his name, but it was his old <coughs> mathematics teacher. <laughs> Both cars were wrecked, but the drivers escaped unhurt. After they crawled out of their cars, the teacher says, Look, our cars are destroyed, but we're safe. This must be a sign from Hashem that we should forget the past and be friends forevermore. The old boy agrees, this must surely be a sign from God. And look here, my car is demolished, but my bottle of Kiddush wine isn't broken. <laughs> we must celebrate. Let's recite Kiddush and drink the bottle of wine. So he opens the bottle and hands it to the maths teacher. And the maths teacher says Kiddush, drinks the wine, gets halfway through the bottle of wine and hands the bottle back. The old boy takes the bottle and he reseals it and returns it to the teacher. And the math teacher says, aren't you having any? The old boy replies, uh, no thanks, I won't have any. I think I'll wait till after the police have been. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the point at which I ask you to make sure that your glass is uh, full and charged. Uh, and I will ask you to uh, stand up. Do you remember Mr. Grossman? Yes. Oh. 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 If you remember, he was not the most flexible of people, uh, either personality-wise or physically. Um, and you remember, he used to sit in his storeroom, in his stockroom. And he was also in charge of the, of the first aid. 
Are you going to shoot me? I'm suddenly so <laughs> So he used to sit like a spider in the web in, the, in his stockroom. And what happened one day, we were playing cricket. We actually managed to get out to the playing fields and playing cricket. And I was batting. And I assumed the use of gloves and helmet, but he didn't need them. And it was Michael Fisher who was actually bowling me. He was quite a good bowler, as I remember. So I was there without gloves, batting. He bowled, he bowled and the ball hit my two fingers there. And it hurt. So I didn't know what to do. I suddenly saw my fingers getting bruised and starting to swell. I thought I'd better go back to the school. I think it was Yoko, who was the, uh, Mr. Yoko, who was the master of us. So he takes me back to the school and takes me into, into Mr. Grossman's stockroom. And Grossman says, Okay, so I was on my guard. I was on my guard, don't worry. I wasn't that innocent. Um, and so he, they immediately called for an ambulance, of course, because my fingers may be broken. But Grossman decides what he needs to do is he needs to put my fingers on a, on a board to keep them straight. So he says, right, Sergeant, he says, I'm going to put the board under your hand, and I'm going to move your fingers. And if I hurt you, you must say, ow. Do you understand? I said, yes, sir. OK. So he starts to move my fingers, and it hurt. I went, like that. He said, Sergeant, I said, say, ow. I said, ow, sir. Thank you. Years have gone by. I'm uh, still 60 years old. Yeah. And my wife and I decided we're not going to get older than 60. You know, being here together reminds me of the, uh, some of you may have heard the, the story of the, the old boys who got to the age of 60 and they decided they'd go out for a meal together. So they had a chat and they said, um, well, why don't we go, one of them said, why don't we go to Cordelino's? They've got some really gorgeous waitresses there. So they went to Cordelino's and had a very nice evening. Ten years later, when they got to 70, they all contacted one another again, and they said, where should we go? And one of them said, um, why don't we go to Cordelino's? They've got some...